Well, hey, everybody. Um, just wanted to go over the winners of our contest this week for Realistic Acrylic Portrait School. And just uh, like last time, discuss um, some of the aspects about the portraits that won, um, just to congratulate the winners again, and then talk about what worked with the portraits, what made them look amazing, uh, why I chose them for the contest as winners, and then also some tips um, where these portraits could be improved as well, uh, because we all need to grow in our skills. And so just uh, want to point out a couple of things where these particular paintings could be, be made even better. And so first off, I want to go over the winners. <laughs> and again, um, I'm going to be putting this out here on YouTube. So we'll give a shout out to some people and hopefully um, maybe lead people to your artwork as well. Um, but first place to Colleen Flanagan. Just want to say congratulations, Colleen, for your portrait. We have second place, Holly Stroh. Uh, Holly was a former student of mine um, here locally in Eau Claire, Wisconsin, where I live. And uh, then we have third place to Sharon Hernley. And uh, honorable mention to Monique Rebrent. Honorable mention to Maddie Bowling. Honorable mention to Sherry Lavelle Feline. Um, and then honorable mention to Benjamin Lester. And honorable mention to Magdalena uh, Bart. Koyak Jauza. And uh, then finally, the People's Choice Award for the person that received the highest number of votes from uh, the people in the group that didn't already receive an award, um, Diane Cook. So just want to say congratulations again to everyone. Fantastic job in all of your portraits. And now, uh, let's go through the images here. And uh, we're going to uh, just take a peek at them individually and then I'm just going to go over and discuss uh, what I like about these portraits and um, so here we have the first one done by Colleen and I really like this painting um, and the reason I chose it is there's just some really good contrast first of all uh, between the the foreground and the background and so um, you have a very diffused background nice smooth blending um, you know going from dark to light and that provides some excellent contrast where the uh, the dog stands out well from the background it's a very um, muted color it doesn't distract at all that, that gray and again i do like the blending that colleen created from this dark to light and you have some interesting tones within here too, where it's kind of dark and light in certain spots. And with the lighter gray on the top, um, we have you know, the, you know, the folds of the ear and all of these darker values really stand out well. Um, and then overall too, we have some um, nice dark values working throughout the whole painting. Everything sim seems to be integrated. Um, so the black, you know, within the, the muzzle is also repeated within the eyes and within the folds of the ears. And then down here on this portion of the body as well. Um, and that makes for a really good portrait because you want to have those values all integrated as a group. You don't want to have one section of your painting really dark and then have one section that's substantially lighter. You want to have everything integrated where if you have a really dark value here, it should be repeated elsewhere where you would expect there to be darker values. And so very, very good job with that. Um, the reflection on the eyes is very well done. Um, she's got the white reflection just in the right place. And, um, you know, the coloring is, is excellent. Um, there's nice texture in the fur. So really, really, I mean, that's why I chose this. It's just very well done. As far as to improve it, I, I'd almost have to see the reference photo to advise Colleen on how to improve it. Um, possibly, you know, there could be a few more little divots and breaks within the fur here. You know, it might be a little too uniform in a couple spots. But um, 
you know, it, it's so well done. I'm sure, you know, the client really loved it. And, uh, you know, there's not a lot to say in terms of how to improve it. Possibly, you know, the purple and the collar, it might be nice to reiterate that color uh, within the background in just a few spots, just for color unity. And, you know, that's kind of a good thing to do. Um, and maybe even the teal color of the tag. Uh, but that would be probably the only thing I could see. Um, and maybe maybe a shadow underneath here, but again, I don't know, based on the lighting, there might not have been a shadow under the muzzle there. So, um, yeah, so anyway, very, very good job, Colleen. And I see with some of her other pet portraits, again, she does a good job with all of them. So, so glad to have you here in the group and to have your uh, talent amongst us. All right, now let's move on to the next one. And so now we have Holly's painting, and uh, this is that famous picture from uh, National Geographic from their cover. And this is a 16 by 20, um, and uh, very, very well done. Uh, the eyes are very striking, and there's great luminosity um, between the uh, foreground and background. And so, you know, Holly really used the glazing technique to, to great effect here, um, making, you know, the background much cooler in tone, and then also reiterating the color of that background into the eyes, which really promotes color unity within the picture. And, um, you know, she has a nice flow here going on with the, the clothing, and that causes your eye to enter in and be kind of carried around the picture and then back so that there's a really good composition with this. The shading is well done, you know, within the face and, um, you know, overall I think it's a, a very well done portrait. Um, I guess to improve maybe, you know, a few darker values within a couple of spots, it could also be the photography on that. Um, and maybe just a, you know, a little more detail within the eyes. And, um, maybe just a little bit of the soften, softening of the edges here. But um, overall, though, a very, very well done portrait. So congratulations, Holly. And so glad to have you in the group and to see your artwork represented here. Um, so hopefully I'll be able to teach you in person again in some of my upcoming classes in the area. All right, now um, let's move on to the next one. We have Sharon Hurley with her uh, painting here, um, Firefighter in training. <laughs> and, uh, Sharon is uh, a member of my uh, classes and she takes my, my classes online and uh, did a really good job with this portrait here. Um, you know, I like the uh, fire engine red of the background. It's very well done. And she has some of that um, color reiterated in the face. So the face has some of those pinkish tones and I think that works well. Um, I do like the smile she captured and the shading. And she really worked within here to get the blue in the eyes very gentle and gradual. Um, so it's not too overt and I like that. Um, the value structure throughout is well done. So you have um, a lot of the darker values within the shirt also reiterated in the helmet in a few different spots. And so that really causes the painting then to integrate together very well. Um, and, uh, you know, I just like the, the overall portrayal here. She did a great job capturing the smile and I think the uh, likeness of the subject. Now to improve, um, you know, maybe um, it might be nice to have the, can't see these markings here, I'd have to use a different color. There we go. It might be nice to uh, have the head a little bit higher up on the canvas or compositionally, I think there might be a little too much room um, between the top of the canvas and the, uh, and the helmet. It's better a lot of times to have the head a little bit higher, but um, you know, with, with the height of the helmet, it might have put the head right in the center and that would be a good uh, choice either compositionally um, because if the head is right in the center that uh, 
that just causes your eye to go right to that and you're not splitting it up in a natural way. But a little bit higher could help uh, just so that this section of the painting um, you know, doesn't fall away and, and has a little more visual interest. However, the, the bright red color of the background still keeps it pretty interesting and keeps your eye engaged. So I think it still works. And then I guess also to improve, you know, maybe a little smoother transitions and some of the values. But overall, even though, you know, the brushwork is pretty aggressive, um, it does have a nice consistent style. And I've seen this represented in some of her other work. So um, I, I believe Sharon is developing her own unique style. And uh, not everyone's style is going to look the same. Um, and having a little more aggressive painterly brush strokes that can really work for a painting too. And it really gives it that, uh, oh, I, I say a John Singer Sargent kind of a feel, kind of that rough realism of the late 1800s. And I like that. So congratulations, Sharon, and so glad to have your work represented here in the group and uh, look forward to seeing what you'll be doing um, in the future. All right, so now I'm gonna go to the next one and we've got, um, got Monique. So Sharon was the third place winner. And here we have Monique, uh, was one of our honorable mention winners. And so uh, really appreciate this portrait here, obviously done in uh, grayscale. And I really like the composition. Um, I think, you know, as far as placement, you know, she's got the, the head, I'm going to use a different color here. It's got the head like right at the top. And so it draws your eye in, you're kind of drawn to this portion of the veil, but then you go down through the eyes and you, know, you go through this spot here, seeing the boutonniere and around um, through the dress and then back up again. So we always want to keep compositionally for aesthetics purposes, um, the viewer engaged in the artwork. Um, we never want to have anything that would um, you know, have an irregularity or an unnatural aspect where it would lead the viewer's eye out of the painting. But here, this works really well. And um, again, the value structure is well done. So we have, you know, the black of his suit and the black of her hair and his hair, um, very strong, you know, in contrast, it's a very deep black. And it is uh, reiterated throughout the picture enough that gives it great unity. Um, and I love to see that. I love to see excellent contrast within the painting, you know, having the darkest values being as dark as they should be, and then the lightest values being as light as they should be. Of course, since we usually work on white canvases, having the lightest values as light as they should be is often not a problem. It's usually the opposite of that that tends to be a problem for many artists where they don't make the um, the darkest values as dark as they should be. But here, that's not an issue. This is very well done. Um, the, the shading, I think, overall is done pretty well. Um, the the uh, sepia tones added in are, are kind of interesting. Um, I, I find myself liking them um, to some degree, but I, I'd like to see maybe a little more integration of those sepia tones throughout the picture. Um, not just in a few spots, but maybe, you know, just overall to see that sepia tone um, kind of working throughout the picture. Um, so I, I don't know if I'm explaining that exactly the way I'd like to, but just rather than it being just in a few select spots, kind of compromising the whole tonality of the picture, um, I think that would look a little a little more natural, like, like an old sepia photograph. But that's just my, my personal opinion. Um, you know, other people might like the way it looks to have it in just a few select spots within the, the painting. Um, now, as far as things to improve upon, um, without seeing the reference photo, I am guessing that there should be a little more shading um, on this bottom portion of the chin. And we have a very, very dark shadow, and this is what we call a cast shadow right here, coming from her chin being cast onto her neck. And wherever you're gonna have a very strong cast shadow, 
if the object above that has any degree of roundness to it, which a chin does have, um, there's going to have to be also a surface shadow going over a portion of that object. Unless her chin was, you know, like a piece of cardboard, it wouldn't, it would be flat and it wouldn't have a surface shadow. Um, but since there is some roundness, um, having a surface shadow on here, which would be a little bit lighter than the cast shadow below it, would really help to give her chin some more roundness. And that would increase the three dimensionality, which in turn gives a, the whole picture a better realism. And so um, that would be something to improve to work on some of those surface shadows. I see that done a little better here on the man. And maybe, you know, because of the uh, dimples in his chin, that was something that was prominent um, that uh, Monique wanted to pick out there in the portrait. But here we'd want to see it within the chin. And, um, and then looking at some of the areas within the eyes, I'm guessing that the white of the eyes were a little too white. Because usually, um, you know, the eyelids and eyebrows cast a little bit of a shadow on that area. And quite possibly the line on his ear is a little too thin, but you know that's just a guess. And I'm guessing also that the eyebrows might be a little too sharply defined in a few spots. They should have a few stray hairs in certain points. Um, but at the end of the day, very, very good portrait. I mean, I really like these highlights here on the hair and that works out very well. So uh, anyway, great, great job, Monique. I'm glad to have your work here and look forward to seeing more in the group. Definitely have talent. All right, now let's go to the next one. Okay, this is um, kind of a, a smaller picture here, but <laughs> got Maddie with this uh, painting of the, the tape man. Um, and I guess she said she painted it on a rock, which is very unique. And, um, yeah, it's a different kind of a surface to paint on, but I like the detail that she achieved here. Um, I can't zoom in on it very much, but I think the eyes look very precise and crisp in the way they're painted. And um, skin tones look very naturalistic. It's a good combination of uh, pink with just a little bit of brown. And uh, so I like that. The, the man stands out well against the white background. I guess as far as improvement, you know, hard to say for sure without seeing the reference photo and also seeing this so small, uh, such a small image represented here, but maybe, you know, a little more uh, shading within the cast shadow from the chin, a little deeper values, perhaps a little more shading on the sides of the face. But overall, very, very well done. Um, so thanks for sharing this and entering it in, Maddie, and congratulations again on this. So uh, hope you share some more paintings and enter in our contest again. Um, okay, um, now we have uh, Sherry's painting, and Sherry's been with us for a while in this group and just very encouraging, and we love having her here and seeing all of these paintings she does of her grandchildren, and that is her goal to, to paint her grandchildren and I love it. She just she has so much inspiration and she keeps on painting. She just keeps on painting and you know you see images of her studio, they're just filled with all of her paintings. Well, I, I like this picture um, for the coloring she's achieved and I like the uh, spontaneity of the, the baby and I like the uh, coloring within the, the pink tones of the shirt being re reiterated by the pink within the headband and the um, and the, the flower on her hair, the, whatever you call it. <laughs> Gals will have to help me out, whatever you call these things. Um, <laughs> and uh, I like the uh, the skin tone and I like some of the nuances she achieved as well. Also the, the background, you know, is nice and dark and that causes the, the baby's face to uh, really come forward in space, which is nice. Without seeing the reference photo, again, it's hard to advise for improvements, but maybe some more nuances within the, um, the eyes, a little more coloring of the eyes might be nice to see. And um, possibly the eyebrows should be a little thicker in a few spots. I'm just guessing because generally um, 
a baby's eyebrows tend to be a little wider across and they're very faint, but uh, generally a little bit wider from what, from what I've seen in painting. And um, possibly the lips a little thicker and um, a little more detail in the eyelid area would be nice. And maybe some shadows underneath the chin. And then um, and a little more detail too within the closing, clothing just to represent the wrinkles. Um, also would be a good improvement too. So there's a few things, you know, seeing the reference photo that uh, we could go and, and uh, add some more nuances to it. But again, so glad to have this in here and congratulations, Sherry, and keep on painting. Love to see your paintings in the group. Um, now I'm going to scroll on to the next one. Uh, we have uh, Benjamin with his painting here of this man sitting down and uh, Benjamin has a, a style you can really you can really discern it's his work right away and he has some really nice shading and and working with light I like the way he, he models his figures with light and so that's really what we have going for it in this painting here we have some really interesting light especially in this spot on the man's arm that really helps to show his form quite well, um, showing the musculature of his arms. And then, you know, here it's very interesting because you have a couple different light sources. You have the light coming from this side and then this side and where they converge, we have some darker shadows in the middle of the face. And it's tricky to portray those, but I think Benjamin did it well. And, um, you know, he has, again, that light reiterated on his pants legs the background is very interesting. Um, so, yeah, I, I really like this painting. Um, compositionally, too, it's very interesting how your eye is drawn in, you know, to the head of the man and then around through the uh, cable and uh, machinery in the back, whatever that is. Um, and then uh, back around through his arm leads your eye in and then back up into the picture again. So uh, very well done. And I guess to improve it without seeing the reference photo, um, possibly to see a little bit of a darker spot on his arm right here to cause this highlight to stick out. I, I think if this section of his arm was even a little bit brighter in comparison to this section, it would contribute to the three dimensionality even more. Again, I'm not sure without seeing the photo, but I'm guessing that this could be catching the light a little more just the way it's angled. And um, possibly on this side as well, a little bit brighter on that side than on this side. It's great to have, you know, those two different light sources on a face, but I think generally one of them should be brighter than the other. Otherwise, it really causes a, a fight between the two different light sources, which one is more powerful. And uh, it, to me, it seems like the light source on the right side is the brighter one, but I just like to see that accentuated a little bit more. And then, um, you know, this particular form in the background, this kind of cloudy effect here, if this were darker, I think that would cause his face to stand out a little brighter because you have um, this really bright section here of his beard and then this extreme light on this side of the face and you kind of lose some of that contrast and definition because of this this uh, lighter space in the background so if that were darker like this or even if it was you know just a few shades darker than what it is that could really improve the look of the portrait, in my opinion. Um, but it is very, very well done. And uh, so great job, Benjamin. Love seeing your work in this group. And uh, you definitely have a great skill in painting. So congratulations on that. OK, um, now we have uh, Magdalena's painting here, this pet portrait. Uh, this is very, very well done. And um, you know, I think what I like best is how she captured the spontaneity of this dog. Um, you know, with the, the leg kind of upraised, a 
paw right here. Um, it looks like this dog is just ready to jump around and, and I don't know, maybe get a doggy treat or run around circles in the room. My mom used to have a little Chihuahua Terrier. Uh, her name was Candy. And when my mom would come home, um, you know, while my mom was gone, the dog would just whine and whimper, and, you know, <laughs> just really high pitch whimpering. And then when my mom came home, when she heard, you know, the car roll off and my mom opening the door, Candy would just run around the room and she would just jump up into the air and leap and scratch her little, her little nails, you know, would just be skittering across the floor. And uh, you could get her so excited that she could run around the room and, and run on the furniture almost at a side angle. She could keep herself upright on vertical objects. It was amazing. That's, that's what this dog reminds me of, just a really energetic, fun dog. Um, and you just look at the reflections. I mean, you have like this reflection here, the brighter reflection, the little darker reflection on this side. That really gives, really gives the um, eyes some three-dimensionality. Um, you have the nose, like just really, really uh, yeah, glossy in some, some certain areas. That's well done. Um, shininess within the fur, the coloring, the shadow behind the dog, even the texture in the rug is well done. Yeah, this is just a really well done painting. And so, so Magdalena, great job on this. I guess to improve, um, maybe have some darker contrast within some of the values, you know, like these areas here look a little more gray than black. So that, that would improve it in my opinion, just to have a little bit of a darker contrast in a few spots and maybe even within the nose a couple brighter highlights but without seeing the reference photo it's hard exactly to advise on that um so again really really good painting here and glad to have you in the group congratulations on that okay and then um, lastly lastly Let's see here, just gotta pull this up. Okay, lastly, we have um, Diane's pet portrait here. And uh, so this one here was, whoops. This one here was our winner for the People's Choice Award. And uh, I really like the contrast between the foreground and the background. We have, you know, really dark background and the dog just really pops out from the background so well. Uh, the reflections in the eyes are nice. You got couple different spots showing like there's two different lights shining. This interesting shape here. Uh, also some reflections on the eyelids, so nice detailing. Reflections on the nostrils, very, very well done. Um, so yeah, I really like this portrait. Um, to improve though, I would, I would think um, maybe a little more dimension on the side of the face. It's hard to tell without seeing the reference photo, but I think some of the values on the side are a little too bright, so it kind of lessens the three dimension, excuse me, three dimensionality, uh, three dimensionality of the dog kind of lessens that a little bit. And um, some of these highlights on the top maybe are just a little too thin, which causes the dog to lose some three dimensionality. So a little more roundness on some of the forms, I think, could help. But overall, a very, very well done portrait. So congratulations, Diane. And I uh, look forward to teaching you more too within the school. Um, so anyway, I guess the last thing I show you is just the overall image of all of our portraits, all of our winners from this last week within the group. So congratulations again. And normally I don't have this much room for all these honorable mentions, but it just worked out that this week we had more room to get some more portrait winners in. And so uh, thank you so much everyone who entered into the contest. Um, it's just a pleasure to be able to see the work coming in and to uh, be able to decide what to put in, you know, in the uh, header image. And just to see so many talented artists all over the world. Um, it's an inspiration to me, you know, to help me keep painting. And, um, you know, together we learn and we get better at what we do. So again, I encourage all of you to keep on entering into the contest. Um, even if you haven't won, definitely enter in. 
Um, if, if you've won in the past, then go ahead and enter in something different. Obviously, if you've won in the past, the same image uh, can't be re-entered again. But you can enter more work, and you can keep on getting featured in the header image. And um, also, too, if uh, you're not a member of the Realistic Acrylic Portrait School Facebook group, like if you're seeing this here on YouTube, um, I'd encourage you to join the group. It's a free group. Um, it's, if you're a portrait artist or you want to become a portrait artist working in acrylic, um, it's a place where you can go. It's a, like I say, a free group uh, where we encourage each other to become better artists. And, you know, I'll be there. Other people will be there to give you some tips um, that you can use. I mean, like right now to get better at your portrait painting. <clears throat> Excuse me. And you might have a question. You might have a question on, you know, a painting you're currently working on. How do, I, how do I get better at this? How do I resolve this issue? It's just frustrating me, you know, the colors are messy, you know, it's not blending properly, or I can't get the proportions or the likeness right in the face, whatever your, your potential problem might be within an existing portrait, um, go ahead and, and, and sign up for our group and, you know, enter your painting in, uh, post an image of it, post your reference photo, and either myself or one of the members there will be glad to help you out and answer your questions. So once you're a member of the group, then you can enter into the contest and it's a lot of fun. And we have that uh, pretty much every week, except, except this particular week for Christmas, we won't have it. Um, so that would be uh, the 23rd and 24th. Normally the contest closes out and I post the winners on the 24th. Well, I would, um, but the 24th is Christmas Eve day. So no contest this coming week, um, but we will have one the, uh, the following week. So uh, anyway, this I guess would be the, yeah, the, the last contest of the year, I, I believe. <laughs> um, and then uh, also just to keep in mind in the group, the, the portrait school group here. Um, I'll be off for Christmas, um, obviously. So be off on the 24th, the 25th, and the 26th. And so if you have any questions uh, that you'd like me to address, uh, you just have to put them on hold. You can still post them. Somebody else in the group might be able to answer them for you. But uh, anyway, um, I will be back with you after the 26th. And anyway, so if you like this uh, video here, give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe for more tutorials and join our Facebook group. I'd love to have you in there. So God bless you and Merry Christmas. We'll talk to you soon.